Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. This video is how to get WinLink installed. Doesn't tell you how to get the radios or the protocols all hooked up, but it teaches you how to get WinLink Express installed quickly and get your WinLink email account set up with no delay. So, hey, if you happen to think of it, click the subscribe button down below. With that, let's get on with the show. Well, hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Um, today, we're going to go ahead and do the first in a series of videos on WinLink. Today's video is going to be installing WinLink and creating your account. WinLink is an amazing program and has lots of potential for health welfare uh, emails going out of disaster areas, uh, as well as potential for communications, uh, much as we do packet today, only over greater distance. Uh, so, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to go ahead and open my browser, and step one is to install WinLink. Uh, the program is WinLink Express. I'm going to go to winlink.org. And I am going to select Download. And I'm going to select User Programs. Then down on the bottom typically is winlink underscore express underscore install and the version number dot zip. And that's what we're going to download. Now, interestingly enough... Um, WinLink is one of the very few services that amateur radio operators use that actually require you to create an account from within their program. Usually, if you're going to create an account for something uh, involved with, of course, uh, uh, amateur radio, you're just going to go up to a website someplace and fill out all the information and be done and then be ready to program it all in your program. Well, not WinLink. WinLink wants you to install a program and create the account through that program. I think it's to ensure that you just don't put an account up there uh, because that account stays with you forever. They do eventually, if you never check your email, and I don't know how long it is, if you never check uh, your WinLink email through a WinLink program or through the WinLink service, uh, you just, you're not going to, uh, your account's going to get deleted and you're going to have to recreate it. Um, anyway, we've downloaded the zip file. I'm going to click it once to open up the zip file. There it is. Let me close my browser. And I'm just going to double click on it right in the zip. Just like that. And it's going to go through and it's going to do what every amateur radio software package pretty much does. It says, don't run this. It's dangerous. It, it's a risk. Well, it's a risk because they haven't spent the money to uh, pay for the Microsoft license, okay, to distribute software through licenses. Uh, it is an unsigned program, so they don't know who the publisher is, neither do you. Now, you've downloaded it from the winlink.org website, uh, and it is the proper WinLink software, so I'm going to go ahead and say run anyway after I clicked on more info. It's going to, of course, ask me, am I sure I want to do this and all that stuff? And yes, of course. Uh, now, I tend to take the default directories and everything else on this. Uh, the reason being is if, uh, if I change something uh, and I'm asking a question or something like that, if they reference a folder, if they reference something like that, uh, I'm not going to know what they're talking about, and then I'm going to have to find it. And So it's just easier to take the defaults. But you know what? This is America. You can install this any way you want. Uh, to continue, uh, click Next. It's basically asking uh, if I want uh, shortcuts and what the name of the folder should be for them. And it says, it's asked me if I want to create a desktop shortcut. And I'm going to say, yeah. And then it's all up to me. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's go ahead and install. The last question it's going to ask, and I believe it's checked by default here, is do I want to run it? So, yeah, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, let me run it, okay? And it pops up, and the first thing it gives me is a setup screen. Now, 
Like every piece of software we run, it wants all sorts of different information. The reality of it is to create my account, which is the goal right now, all I need to put in there is my call sign, my password, and I can create it if I want right here if I don't already have an account. If I have an account, I have to use the password for that account. And then, of course, a password recovery email. Now, guess what, though? I already have an account. So I am going to click here and watch what happens. If my password is correct, it's going to go ahead and populate all the information up here. Um, my name, my street address, everything else. Uh, as well as my grid square and everything else that I have saved. So everything's here. Now, there are a few settings here that you can modify. Service codes, uh, you may want to add additional service codes. Uh, public are public servers, they allow you to connect, not a problem at all. Uh, there are MCOM servers that, uh, you know, if you're using it for MCOM as well, you can add those and use those. Um, for now, just stay with public. So over here, the only thing that I actually change, like I, I'll keep logs for two weeks, all these perimeters are, you know, the basic perimeters are really good, but I do check display a list of pending incoming messages prior to download. And what that is, is it's going to give me a list of all the messages that are bound for me or any of the aliases that I might have. And what's going to happen is it's going to give me the option of downloading them or leaving them there for another connection. Great example of why I'd want to do that is I wouldn't necessarily want to download my messages into this installation I'm doing here because I'm doing it as a demonstration, right? So I don't want to take messages and, you know, stick them in here and then have to copy them out and do other stuff. Uh, that's an important point too. When you download a message, it downloads to your client and that's where it lives after that. Secondly, uh, I might be uh, doing this from an MCOM computer somewhere and I may be typing in, uh, I may be receiving email on an alias on my account, but there's also some personal email in there. I don't want to download that onto the MCOM computer. So that's the reasoning behind my setting there. Again, your mileage may vary completely up to you. Of course, your call suffix uh, optional could be used like a uh, used uh, for country code and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, typically also don't use uh, SSID. Don't do like a dash one or a dash two or anything like that. It doesn't really work that way uh, for this. So I'll go ahead and click update. And there we go. And now it's going to nag me for a registration key, which I don't have to buy. I can use um, this software forever. I don't have to go and pay money. Uh, if you choose to support it, that would be great. You should. I did. But you know what? You don't have to. Anyway, with that, uh, there is a new version of WinLink Standard Forms, and we'll talk about forms a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and update it. But forms are methods for you to send uh, emails that you send over and over. You can create your own forms, or, uh, of course, any of the FEMA forms are available, and we'll show that in a future video. What we really want to do today is just kind of talk about setup. So we're all set up. Guess what? I can go ahead and check my email right now. I don't need to interface with the radio if I have the internet. And obviously, if I download the software online, I have the internet. Uh, over here is all the different ways I can get email via Packet, via Winmore, via Vara. Uh, but let's we're going to click on Telnet Winley. And I'm going to write down here is Open Session. I'm going to click on Open the Session. And I'm going to click on Start. And it just went out and it just checked for email. That's simple. It's all done. It's disconnected. And I can close the session manager for Terminal. Now, you've successfully installed Winlink. 
you successfully set up and made a connection with Windling. That easy. Not hard at all. Let's talk about few, a few of the settings, though, and what they are. Again, we go back to our main screen. This contact info is optional. I would put it in just because. It's a good thing to have up there, um, and uh, it makes it easier for them to mail you or do things if there's a problem. Um, also, it will auto-populate some of the forms that they have with your information if you so choose to have it do that. All right. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, you can change the fonts for the emails. You can, uh, if you have a GPS, you can actually interface it with this and it will automatically place your position in emails that uh, are forums that are asking for your permission, uh, your position. Uh, um, and you can also get GPS reports and report GPS locations uh up to WinLink so it knows what your position is. Now why is this? Well WinLink it really was designed originally for seafaring vessels uh, so people could send email and also as an emergency communication method uh, they'd be sending email via amateur radio um, when the chips are down. Uh, and it's also nice you know for uh, folks on fishing, fishing vessels to be able to send emails to their family so it's become very popular over the years. Um, anyway, let's go back to settings. Um, you can request catalog requests. We'll go into that possibly in another uh, video as long as the GRIB. Uh, we'll go into that in another video. Let's look at preferences. And the only thing in preferences that I typically want to uh, uh, change is right here where it says distance units. I want to change it from kilometers to miles uh, just because... I'm in America. I'm used to dealing in miles. Um, all the rest of this stuff you can go through. I pretty much take the defaults other than uh, the distance units. Um, we'll continue down through here. I can auto open sessions when it starts up to have it automatically open a session and connect when I launch it. I don't want that. Uh, I can edit my contacts. I can actually have contact lists here. Uh, make it faster. They end up down here, just like a contest tact list that you have any in any other email client. Uh, let's see, and of course, group addresses. You can add a personal folder, or you can add a global folder. And let me explain the difference. A personal folder only you have access to, uh, which are all these right here. These are all personal folders of yours or system folders for you. So this is your inbox. If another user connects and uh, logs in, because you can have multiple call signs, which are different accounts, that's how you do it in a uh, uh, oh, in a uh, EOC is you have someone connect as another user, so they're using their call sign to send their email. Uh, and you can have global folders where they copy you copy everything. Uh, global folder, I can show how to set that up real quick. If I go to global folders, we'll call it uh, East County Sheriff's Station. How's that sound? Update. And there we go. And I can move anything into here that I want to share with all the other users on the system. All right. And really, that's about the size of it. Uh, of course, back up and restore our uh, database. Yeah. So I can back up my database now and then update it. And this will allow me to... And Basically, that's all the stuff in here. This will allow me to restore that database instance if I need to, okay, if something gets corrupted. And it's set to automatically do that. Take a look at some of the settings. Let's see. And for messages, templates, template settings, set favorite templates. Let's talk a little about templates, just a little bit. Uh, I said they were there. Now, I can edit my templates here under messages so I can pull up all the templates and here are the standard templates we just updated them and look at all this ARL forms 
But most importantly, let's take a look at FEMA forms, resource and mission, and also we can take a look at Instant Command Center U.S. forms, and there is our ICS-213, very important form, and it's right there. So how do we use those forms? Well, so let's say I want to open up a new message. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger. I can go to Select Template, and from here I can say, all right, I want to fill out, let's see, I'm going to fill out a... You know what? I'm going to go to General Forms, and way down at the bottom, there's a WinLink check-in form. I'll select that, and what's going to happen is my browser's going to open. I'm going to have a form that I can fill out. Slow Machine. And Plus, I don't think I've ever loaded any of these templates on this machine, so there we go. There's the initial, uh, initial uh, template. So I can say, all right, set up, and this is going to be for oh, uh, A-R-E-S, okay, uh, date and time. I click on it, it'll automatically place it. Uh, let's see, send to. So I'm going to send this to me. I would normally send it to a special check-in address. Um, and, ah, oh, what the heck, we'll say it's a net check-in, and I am going to, there's, I'm not doing it on a band, I'm going to do it via Telnet. Um, how many of the call signs? Well, the only call sign here is me, so I'll put that in. And I, of course, am the sender. Uh, my location is, uh, oh, well, just say home, QTH. Normally, I'd put an address in there. Uh, or at least, uh, you know, uh, maybe in my uh, designated area for Aries, something like that. I can, uh, if I had a GPS, guess what? It would automatically populate that, but I don't. And I'll just put in here, uh, no traffic. That's my message. And I'll say, submit. It says, okay, I'm going to submit it. And then... Now I've got a blank page. Oh no, what happened? Well, I'll close the browser and guess what? It has now populated this check-in form and set stuff up in an XML file. It has placed my to address right there. So I'm all set to rock and roll. Now a couple interesting things are going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and post this to my outbox. Okay. The first thing is that um, when I send this, and it passes through the WinLink system. And again, I'm just going to sell it via, send it via Telnet. There it goes. It's gone to my personal address. Normally, I would send it to uh, the Aries check-in. And, of course, I'd wait for this to, say, start and disconnect it before I close this. But it's also going to add the address that I sent it to to my whitelist up on the servers. Okay. So when I say up on the servers, I'm talking about the internet servers that WinLink uh, is basically uh, managing and controlling. Uh, that's part of what that registration money goes for, uh, is to support that as well. Uh, so uh, again, it's you don't have to you don't have to register it. You don't have to get a key or anything like that. It works without it. Uh, it delays you getting in by about I think five seconds maybe, uh, but you know, for me, it was something I thought it was a worthwhile investment. Anyway, back on subject. That really is about it. Um, you know, uh, what where we're going to go from here is we're going to set up sound modem, <coughs> excuse me, sound modem uh, for packet with a radio. And then we are going to start sending uh, our email and receiving our email through a packet connection. Uh, once we do that, then I think we'll take a look at VARA, okay? And we'll take a look as we're doing this at some more of the enhanced features of WinLink. So I hope you come back for uh, the next few videos on this. And, uh, hey, I hope you liked it. If you did, hey, give me a thumbs up down, down in uh, the bottom here. And any questions or comments, you know where to leave them. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Pretty easy. Um, next video will be on how to configure sound modem. 
Uh, Shao Modem is an extremely valuable program if you want to do FM packet. So we'll get to that real soon. And if you think of it, if you like the video, click like. And don't forget to subscribe. Any questions or comments, make them down below as well. Thanks again, and this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and hope to see you on the air.